Hey, welcome to the shop. So I need to go get some shielding gas from the welding supply. I thought maybe we should talk about how to buy a gas cylinder, what kind of uh, gas to get, different sizes. The first thing to talk about here is safety. So these cylinders get filled up to right around 2,400 PSI, and that is a lot of pressure. And one of the biggest concerns is just that this cylinder handle, um, the valve up here, uh, could get broken off if it got tipped over or something like that, send this thing shooting like a rocket. So for that reason, I have the cylinder chained to my cart here. See if I move it around, it's not going anywhere. And then uh, after I take the regulator off, I'm gonna put on this cap. Let's take a look at some of the markings that you'll have on the cylinder. And I imagine a lot of this is gonna vary in different countries. There's a date here on the cylinder. And what that is, is that's the date that it was tested. So this was tested in March of 2003. Then these couple other marks, this plus means that it can be overpressured a little bit. Um, and then the star means that it's good for 10 years. If you don't have a star, it's good for five years. So it would have been due in 2013. Look for another date stamp. It was retested in January of 2015. It's good till 2025. One other part of the cylinder I wanna point out here is this neck right there. If you lease a cylinder, they'll often put the uh, name of the owning company on there. I, I purchase all my cylinders. I don't like to lease them. If you are buying one used, if it has has uh, the name of a gas supplier there, make sure that you're gonna be able to still exchange that wherever you go. Okay, we're on our way. Let's talk a little bit about the types of gases that you might use when you're uh, welding. So for MIG welding, the most common that you're gonna use to MIG weld steel is C25, which is 75% argon, 25% CO2. Now, when you are running C25, you're running in what's called short circuit uh, transfer mode. And if you don't know what that is, it's probably what you're doing. Um, it's the most common, especially for people who are welding in their garage or just starting out uh, MIG welding. So C25 is the best option for that. You can use straight CO2 at a little bit of a cost savings, but I, I don't think it's worth it. Um, but that's what I used to use when I first started out and, and it worked fine. Now, if you are MIG welding aluminum, like with a spool gun, it's gonna be best to run straight argon gas. And if you're welding stainless steel, you'll use uh, Trimix is the, the best, which is argon, CO2, and helium blended up. Um, but for me, on MIG, I only run C25 for steel and argon for aluminum. Now let's talk about TIG welding. TIG welding is much simpler because you can run argon for pretty much everything. And uh, that's what I do, I only run argon. The one other option you have really, or the main one, is to run helium or mix in a little bit of helium, which can give you a little bit harder arc, um, especially when you're welding aluminum. Okay, so I ran into a little issue when I went to get the gas. They were out of this gas in the cylinder size that I needed. So I ended up going up the road to another welding supply that I've used for other things, but not for gas and got one at a similar price. And then I called a third uh, location as well. So I got some pricing data for different sizes and from a few different locations. I'll put that together in a little summary table we'll talk about in a second. But now that I've got my cylinder here, I'll go ahead and just crack the valve open a little bit. Like that, just to let a little gas flow through and get any dirt out of the way so it doesn't uh, plug up my regulator. Now, there are a couple different types of regulator flow meters, because with welding gas, uh, shielding gas, you're really trying to control the flow rate or how much gas is coming out in a certain amount of time. So this type that has the two gauges on it um, uses a pressure regulator, and then it has an orifice, which is a small hole, you know a certain amount of gas will go through that small hole at a certain pressure. Now I like these just fine for MIG welding, but there's another type that I like a little bit better for TIG welding. For TIG welding, I like the type of uh, flow meter with a floating ball. And these will regulate and have a fixed pressure coming out of here, and then you'll open and close uh, a little valve here, which is like varying the orifice. And I think I, I get a little bit more accurate uh, flow uh, reading off of these. So anyway, I'll go ahead and open this up. And when you open the valve on these cylinders, um, at least for this type of cylinder, it's a good idea to open it all the way to the top 
um, and then it'll seal on the top and keep uh, your gas from leaking out. Um, on fuel gas cylinders, if you have like an acetylene one, it's usually a good idea to just open it a little bit. So if things go south, you can turn it off quick. But uh, anyway, this one has two different out outputs. A lot of them will have only one. I have a second because it lets me hook up um, another hose that can put gas on the back side of certain welds. But anyway, basically when you open it up, you can see the ball floating here and that'll tell you how much gas is flowing out of your uh, flow meter here. What it should actually be on MIG welding, I go right around between 20 and 30, uh, somewhere around there cubic feet per hour and just leave it locked in. For TIG welding, I'll vary anywhere from 10, really low, up to 35, uh, depending on the size of cup and material that I'm welding. Now to take this one step further when I'm TIG welding, I actually have one of these things that will go over the tip of your TIG torch, and then you can press your pedal and get the post flow going, and it'll show you the gas flow. Now mine only works in liters per minute, it really wasn't very expensive, but you just double that for cubic feet per hour, and that'll get you uh, close enough here. So right now I'm flowing five liters per minute, or 10 cubic feet per hour. So let's talk about sizes of cylinders. They come anywhere from 20 cubic feet up to over 300 cubic feet. Now, apologies to those overseas, I'm gonna be talking in cubic feet here because that's what I'm familiar with. They also have letter designations. So for a hobbyist, I'd recommend getting something between a 60 uh, cubic foot cylinder and a 125 cubic foot cylinder. Um, in between that, there's an 80 that's also available. Those seem to be a good size for me in my shop that lasts long enough that it's not super inconvenient but they're still easy enough to handle. I priced these out at three different uh, local welding supplies as well as priced out if you order online the actual cylinders themselves because you can do that now you can buy them on Amazon or, or other things. I put together a little chart here showing you're looking somewhere between $165 on the low end for the 60 cubic foot all the way up to uh, right around $250 um, for a 125 cubic foot. And buying them locally was a pretty similar price. So for me, I'd just buy it locally and get it full there. Um, now, as far as the exchange goes on the gas itself to go inside of this, uh, I found that Argon and uh, C25 gas were pretty similar in price. So I just averaged the prices from two of the welding supplies that I talked to because they were really close to each other. One of them was way higher, so I didn't want to throw in that uh, outlier there. And it cost somewhere around $45 to exchange one of these uh, smaller cylinders up to $70 to exchange one of the 125s. And that can vary widely depending on where you live, who your suppliers that are available are, what your uh, contract agreement is. You know, just take this data for what it is. It's just to give you a rough idea of what you're looking at. One thing you'll notice is it's actually less uh, per cubic foot of gas if you buy it in a bigger uh, cylinder, which makes sense because there's some fixed cost with the exchange itself. Now, how long will you be able to weld with the different size cylinders? Just to give you an idea, um, you can do some simple math. So when I'm MIG welding, I'm running about 20 cubic feet per hour. So I'm gonna be able to MIG weld for about three hours on uh, one of these um, 60 cubic foot cylinders and about six hours on one of these larger cylinders. Now that's not six hours of work because most of the time that I'm working, I'm not actually arc on welding, right? And so that, that's actual uh, you know, gas flow time. Now with TIG welding, um, you might flow a fair bit more, especially if you're running stainless steel and you're using a back purge and a large cup, you might burn through you know, somewhere around a total of 40 cubic feet per hour and you're gonna have pre and post flow as well, which increases that time. So your gas can run out a fair bit faster there. For me, I run for quite a while on a 125. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, now that I've got my gas all set up, I gotta get to work. I got some stuff to get done here. So I'm gonna have to say, we'll see you next time.